Cool. So tonight, I'm giving you a little overview of what I would kind of view as one of the core bits, one of the core messages of the gospel. It's a little heavy, but it's also really important um, because it helps us understand our faith and it helps us talk to our friends when we can kind of articulate these things well. So I've got some bad news, followed by some good news, and the good news brings us hope. The bad news is important, as much as we don't like thinking about it, because when we understand the bad news, we see the real worth of the good news. So important. The bad news, we'll start with the bad news. The bad news is that you have an illness. It's not one that medicine can cure, and you're not alone. All of humanity has it, collectively and individually. The Bible calls it sin. You've probably heard of that before. Sometimes we call sin the bad choices we make, because it sounds a little less scary. Uh, whilst it's not wrong, it doesn't necessarily kind of reflect the weight of sin. Because sin, sin is weighty. It's weighty. It's my gesture for weighty. Um, sin isn't just the stuff we do. It's almost our default setting. Sadly, as humans, we're sinful by nature. And our lives with Jesus become a fight against sin, among other things. And there are a lot of ways to define sin. Um, but the one I want to get across to you tonight is that sinfulness is the opposite of holiness. If that makes sense. Sinfulness, opposite of holiness. A slight sidebar. The world tries to tell us that there is kind of no right and wrong only shades of grey, no black and white. We can decide what's morally okay and what's not. But this is, this is just wrong. There's no kind of two ways around it. It's wrong. The Bible tells us that God decides what's right and what's wrong. Because he is the only one that is holy and good. There's no scale of sinful to holy and the stuff in the middle. There is just holiness and sinfulness. Opposites. The Bible tells us that God is holy. This isn't just his actions. He doesn't just do holy stuff, but it's his very nature. God is holy without sin. And the thing about holiness is that it cannot stand sin. Holiness cannot sin, but it can also not abide with sin. And this is where the big problem comes in. So God created us to live in relationship with him, to be loved by him. And we need that. We yearn for it. Without God, we, we're kind of missing something. Like there's a little bit of a hole. We try and fill it with stuff. But only God satisfies our soul. So the problem that I mentioned. So if we're made to be in relationship with God, but we are contaminated by our sin, we can't. There's kind of like these two things don't go together. And there's a little bit more to it. Sin has a cost. It has a price that has to be paid and a punishment that must be taken. I get this is getting a bit gloomy, but there is a good bit and we've arrived at the good bit. So us, being sinful, mortal and tiny, are unable to pay the price for sin or make ourselves clean. We cannot make ourselves holy. There is one that can. The only one that can is the Holy One. Enter Jesus, the Son of God. Holy and without sin. He walked the earth amongst the sinful men as a man without sinning. And that's quite an accomplishment because we're all pretty sinful. And Jesus made a choice. He made a choice to stand in our place. To take the punishment that we're owed for our actions and our choices to pay the price for sin that we cannot. That's quite an important thing to kind of let sink in. Your sin, past, present, future, is dealt with completely. It's finished. It's done. The outcome of this, we can be washed clean of the filth of the sin that we have created. And then we can be in relationship with God. Our sins forgiven, made holy through Jesus, so we can be in relationship with God. We call it sanctification. It's a very big word, but that's what it means to be made holy. This isn't just something that kind of changes our lives for a little bit. It changes the direction of our lives for eternity. So when my time on earth is done, I will die. Sad, but natural. And after that, well, it might not be sad for some people. Sad for me, maybe. I don't know. It's not sad for me because I get to go to heaven. Sad for someone, I'm sure. So anyway, slight aside. Where was I? So I will die. Time on earth is over. I'm going to die. After that, I will either spend eternity with God in glory or eternity without God in torment. 
Hard to hear, but it is the reality. The punishment for sin, in case you were wondering, is death. Jesus died for you and for me, and then he rose again to show that death and sin are defeated. These words on the cross, it is finished. And he didn't mean it's kind of mostly finished, it's finished for now, it's finished, it's done. Done and dusted. So, that was cold. Now you're asking, what do I have to do to earn this, this forgiveness and this sanctification? Because surely there has to be something I do. Nothing is for free. Nothing. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing you can do to earn this. You can't earn your way through goodness or charity. That comes after. This is a gift freely given. <clears throat> is it given to all? It's given to all who come. It's given to all who seek. Ask and it's yours. The greatest gift we could possibly ask for. And all we have to do is ask. Do you want to know what the Bible's qualifications are for receiving this gift? If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. That's it. That's all. Confess and believe. So we have the bad news. The good news. And the promise. Believe and you will be saved. 